Alright, so this came in today. It's a Ghoul RC 60 amp PSC for 2 or 3S LiPo. I got one of this here and I don't know why this was sent to me. I never expected this. Uh, so yeah, it's somewhere there. I'll show you a video later of the 2S and the 3S for this. It's pretty good. It's like the Hobby Wing 1060. It says waterproof, but it's really not. I think it, it just comes with this pack. No bags whatsoever, except for the shipping bags. And this is just a regular printed and blown up manual. Better than nothing, especially if you're starting. So, yeah, let's see. It supports two 3S LiPo, or if you're still using uh, nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium die cut batteries. It has low voltage cutoff. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's 3.4 usually volts per cell. Uh, overheat protection, I've never experienced this because I'm crawling a lot, so I don't have to worry about heat that much. And it has this forward brake, forward brake, and retreat. There's another one that I'll show you later. But here it says slash proof. And uh, looking at it, it doesn't look like it's waterproof. Uh, fine center position automatically. That's yeah, that's correct. And there you go. Now what I will do is because my 3s, all my 3s actually. I have three 3s now. This is the one I'm gonna use for this uh, because for this is for the six by six truck. I have converted it to JST, especially these ones. I really did convert this to JST. For this, I have not converted it yet. I just made a little adapter. So it's still XT60. Maybe I will go XT60. In any case, you need to take this out because it's for the Tamiya thingy. So let me show you how I do mine. Very simple. I just cut it off and Or maybe for now, I'll just use this, just to try it out, huh? Ah, I can. So this really has to go. So I have a bunch of JSTs, a bunch of them, and uh, it will take female. So let's take that. Let me show you what I do without soldering it. Yeah. It's good if you can solder it, but for me, I don't solder it for now because as I mentioned, even with this, these are just heat shrink and it's just, it's not soldered properly because uh, it's kind of like temporary. So, with me. Let me show you how I do it. First, you want heat shrinks. So, you want some heat shrinks. Okay, you want to get appropriately sized heat shrinks. I think I have black, and that should re really look nice and black. Let me see. Oh, there we go. This is the big black one. 
As a matter of fact, that's a better option. So I need red. There. It's black and red. And usually I cut this off. Because, you know. Too long for what I want to do. Then you can use this for some other project. And uh, let me show how I do things. This is not necessarily the correct way to do it, but it's how I do it. I'll choose yellow again. I have two size heat shrinks. And you'll ask what for and I will tell you what it is for okay so this is too long even more So what I do is I put this here. Actually this is now too long. It's my fault. Hmm? Okay, this is this little heat shrink is so that this bigger one, because as you can see the size difference is really huge. So this is just to help with the shrinking the other one. Then you put the shrink force, the H shrink. And then I do it like this. So I separate them into three most equal parts because you can see this is probably gauge 14 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the other one for the JST it's probably gauge 20, 20 or 22. So I make it like that. here so one of them you just wrap them around and you have to wrap make sure that both of them are wrapping at each other and not just one over the other that way you can secure and then you just wrap this around also with this so that way it's kind of like interlocking it and then what I like to do with the last one disrupt it the opposite direction and so now you will be left with, uh, with this right and then sleeve over And then you can let's do it on the other one.
opposite direction. And there you go. So now you have your 2S that can power this up. <coughs> I can use my controller here, I think. For the motor. This is for the motor. Um, where is it? Can I use this for this? Yeah, I think so. Let's use this for now. This is the WPL 260 motor. Okay. Red to red. Let's get some. Yes. Okay. There you go. I can test my motor here. No? No, I can. So you have to test it on. But yeah. Alright, so. That's just the ghoul RC. I do want to try that. Uh, let me take this out. This 6x6 six six and uh, I'll show you later. Alright, so here we go. I installed the WPL quite temporarily. I'm running out of screws and uh, I need to fix those probably right now. So this is the thing, right? So here you will see it has jumpers. Let me show you. So here it says FBR and then FR and then FR. This is what you want. This is for crawling. Well, I don't know if you want that, but this will give you drag brake. A drag brake is uh, when you release the throttle, it breaks itself, and uh, that's good if you're on incline or uh you're ascending or descending a climb uh it will hold its place uh but for this one i find that its setting is i don't think it's programmable but the setting is quite really harsh uh especially on the two speed uh you will see in the video uh in the compilation later yeah so i just took it out so that the setting is on the fr so it's just forward and reverse and it will have its drag base and of course you want that on lipo all right so this goes to the channel 2 of your receiver channel 1 is your steering servo by the way a tip 1 receiver the edge most part or pins would be your ground okay so whatever your ground is usually it's brown or black <clears throat> and the one nearest to the circuit board or inner would be your signal wire so just a little tip for you all right so that's just about it but i have this i'm gonna put this in channel four that's the shifter and for now, I'm just gonna use this 3S LiPo here. 
that is now too short for this but I think that will work so this is your power the one that we did earlier the conversion so you have to put that there for your power this one has a BAC 6 volt so I did not use my I have a UBEC that I was using before and then this is your motor and what I did for now is I just put in some plugs there it's not the best but I don't want to do some major conversion for now all right and this thing should now work if we always turn on the receiver first and then always calibrate it by calibrating it what you need to do is you turn it on and press it all the way and then turn on so it should be the receiver is turned on and then you press this on and then you just release and then you will hear a longer beep it's now calibrated okay so I'm gonna try it out as a Trias LiPo in two speed this is in high speed gear of course nobody yet Let's see if it climbs. This is the low speed. But this one was a hard climb for the 4x4 because it's steep. You can see that uh, torque twist right there. But it makes good use of, of that rear wheel. 